Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Drone Mesh. So today we're going to be testing an ESC, and it's the favorite ESC. Now these have tested very terrible. This brand has tested very terrible in the past. Hopefully here we see a little bit of a difference. So this is called the Cloud Phoenix 35 Amp ESC. It is a BL Heli 32 ESC, and it's rated for 35 amps and a 40 amp burst for up to 10 seconds. Now, as you can tell here, we do have the sticker. The sticker is just under the sticker. What's uh, going on here is a heat sink to all the MOSFETs. So all the MOSFETs are up top here. So that's very nice to see. It gets very good cooling. And uh, if we take a look back here, we don't really have much filtration. So this is kind of scary. And this is usually the biggest problem of these ESCs. They're just very noisy. And as you could tell here, it is a BL Heli 32 ESC and it has a current sensor. That's awesome. However, there is no telemetry pad. So the, I don't know what the hell they were thinking here. So let's just zoom in a little bit. There we go. And as you can tell right here, it just says signal and you got your ground right there. That's it. You know, there's no there's no telemetry pad. This could possibly be a telemetry pad, as you can tell. It says TX, but it could not also. So it, hopefully it is, but that's a pain in the ass to get it all the way from here. And I don't know why the heck they would put the, you know, the current. I would rather, you know, if, if this was my design, I would just throw that off and just add more caps right here and just uh, make sure you get a better overall uh, you know, clean system, clean ESC. So this is something very important to take note of. I mean, I don't know if it has telemetry or not. I mean, you could you, in the pictures you will see this, but I don't know if we're going to be able to access telemetry through that pad right there. And if anyone's used it, please let us know down in the comment section. So overall, I mean, it's pretty. It's like third, fourteen bucks. So it is kind of on the expensive side. So I'm gonna give it high hopes because of its price. And um, yeah, so let's just go ahead and test this guy. So it is rated three to six S light, and that's all I could to really say right now. So enough talking, and let's get testing. All right, guys. So the results are in here, and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare it to the Gem Fan Maverick ESC, which is eleven dollars, and the Phoenix here is fourteen dollars. So let's take a look at this now in throttle noise uh, level testing. So let's just let's actually get into the throttle noise. So this graph here shows you 10% throttle noise, 25, 50, 75, and 100% throttle. So that's what you're seeing here. Here it's just like maneuvers and you know just you know custom injected noise test to really bash it in and seeing what kind of noise we could generate out of this. And it's it's, it's, uh, it's it works pretty good. So all right, so let's get started. Now, on the left side, we have the Gemfan Maverick, and on the right side, we have the favorite Phoenix uh, ESC, which just came out right now. It's called the favorite, so it's not my favorite at all. <laughs> so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So as you can tell here, it's having some nasty spikes on the throttle noise. This is very bad to see. It didn't sound nowhere near as smooth as the Maverick here. And um, yeah, for 14 bucks, that's not looking good already. And plus, you know, it had that current sensor for no reason because there's no telemetry pad, unless that is that TX pad is telemetry pad, but which will be a pain in the ass to actually go and solder a wire to it. So yeah, I just don't understand. I would rather just install more caps instead of that current sensor. I don't know what, what they're thinking. Anyways, let's jump down to the noise test. So on the right here, we have the Phoenix. As you can tell, this is terrible. They're just, you know, one after the other. These, the, you know, the, the favorite brand is just insanely not good at all. Like, never. I mean, this is an $11 ESC, and it sounded smoother. And look at it. You could tell the complete difference. Look at this. This had a voltage spike of 35.2. I think the worst I got on it was around 38, 39 volts. So this is like somewhere in the average between what I'm using between these two. And, um, yeah, so the, uh, you know, the, I don't know what to tell you. It's just, it's not a good ESC. I'd rather go for the Maverick uh, and it's even cheaper and it even sounds smoother. So yeah, uh, this like one fat low ESR capacitor would clean most of this right up and you have a pretty good flying quadcopter, I believe. Uh, we'll be checking this one out very soon. However, this one, I, I don't know if I'll be checking it out. It just looks terrible and it sounded terrible too. Um, so yeah, the Phoenix, I would, uh, definitely try to avoid in my opinion um like 100 percent avoid and it's even more expensive i mean if you had to choose i'd just go for the maverick here and it even has a telemetry pad but doesn't have current sensor but who cares if it's performing better and it's cheaper so yeah overall um the phoenix is a no-go for me at least uh it's up to you but uh, yeah this does not look very well at all uh comparing these two together and uh, this would be in a class, the Maverick is in a class, should be lower than the, the Phoenix. Phoenix is 
should be, you know, operating next to the Emacs formula because they're in the same price category with the same kind of features. So let's see if we can grab the, uh, the testing results from the Emacs formula here. And uh, we need to get it. Here's the Emacs formula custom drip noise. There we go. So we're just going to do this like that. <clears throat> and the Emacs formula throttle noise, which is this one here. Okay. So if we take a look here, these two are the same price. But look at the Emacs formula. They just whoops this one's ass. And they're in the same price category. So, yeah. This one just doesn't make any sense to me. So overall, I would avoid it in my opinion and uh, just be careful guys because this will give you the worst headache of your life possibly on your quadcopter. You're going to have to play with your filters to get it just right. For example, like that previous quad we had possibly, you were probably going to just, you know, it's just going to be jittering as soon as you turn it on, especially on the new beta flight with the new filter settings. So yeah, I would highly avoid this one. I don't, I don't think you could really do much. Even, I think if you put a low ESR capacitor on each ESC, it'll make a little bit better, but it's still, you know, I think you're going to have a lot of power loss because, you know, it's just, um, this is one of the worst ESCs I've also tested. So I, I would just avoid, that's my opinion. And that's really it, guys. So uh, I do apologize. It wasn't a good one. We tried. I mean, every single one of them that comes out from that brand is just absolutely not good. And I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really hope it was very useful to some people out there. And if it was, consider joining my Patreon. I do a lot of giveaways. You could also support this channel. Keep this channel going. Help me get more components in for testing. And um, yeah, and that's it, guys. So if you have, if you could also use the fill links down below, those greatly support the channel. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe because that also helps the channel. And I uh, will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.